Hello, it's good to have you join us again for your favorite program on NTA2 Lagos Network Center, our flagship program. Plus Flow, bringing into the studio distinguished Nigerians to come and share with us experiences, impressions, and of course, uh, maybe sometimes our fears about how Nigeria can become one of the greatest nations on the face of the earth. Today, we're going to be looking at something a little bit, uh, sometimes you may think it's... Um, frantic, you may think it's um, um, anxious, you may think it's um, a little bit far-fetched, you may think it's um, uh, something I should want to consign, you know, to just the medical people and let them be dealing with it, whilst you, you know, just live your life, you know, as it were. And that's about uh, a learning difficulty, or some people call it learning disability, some people call it, well, learning deficiency, I don't know, but I think it's just a learning challenge for some of us because it, it affects both children and adults really for some people it can be a lifelong situation for others they just may find a way out of it um for what i studied so far um besides this difficulty you experience it in um, reading writing and comprehension uh, so if you cannot comprehend this what the story you are reading so how do you want to understand it and uh, also you may actually find that such people, they are normal in the sense that um, they are very intelligent, they are also very creative, and then their vision is not impaired. So it's not like the sight is bad, so the child is not seen properly, or the adult is not seen properly, and therefore may not understand what is reading or writing. And now, by our statistics, poor as our statistics may be in Nigeria, we have 1.5 million 1.5 million cases per year per annum in this country. And what am I talking about here? I'm talking about, um, well, something that, if I, if I say it now, you may be wondering what it's all about, but it's dyslexia. Now, I have the founder and chief executive of One World Africa. One World Africa is actually an NGO that is trying to see how do we deal with this? How do we understand this? How do we process it? How do we begin to escalate information about what actually dyslexia is? So who are the dyslexics? How do you get to know them? How do you help them out of that uh, condition? So I have with me in the studio a distinguished Nigerian, a young girl in her 20s who is going to be telling us how she came about this how she has decided to put the right foot forward and become altruistic to teach all of us, both adults and children, what dyslexia is. My pleasure to welcome her to Close Flow today. Our very guest, Ola Doin Ido. You're Thank welcome you to Close so Flow. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, in a sense, what you are trying to do is almost like a, a pathfinding thing. It's almost. Well, how did you get into this? Okay, so um, I was struggling with school. I, I finished from um, secondary school. I was about to like proceed into education. I got into that space, and um, it was difficult. I had my parents pressuring me. There was pressure all over everywhere. And but you need I to get just, university admission, and I, you're not getting it. I, I even I got into a level because I was even too young to get into university, and the struggle was just so much. My results wasn't reflecting my struggle, but I knew my personal struggle. And um, one one day, I just was like, it's "I'm enough. not doing this anymore." And I decided to just come back home for Christmas holiday one time and refuse to go back to school, to school. in January. And um, of course, you don't drop out in a Nigerian parent home. Yes, so it's it was it was it was a war. It was a war. Like everybody was everybody was like was going Is she okay? on exactly. And I'm like, but eventually, yes. In I I'm I'm a person that I am I am very ambitious as like personally I'm very ambitious, so I was also very concerned. Be, Why this is happening? While all of this was happening, I'm like, I mustn't end up this way. I can't even end up at home, so I had to figure out what exactly was wrong with me. So one time I was I went online and um, I researched. I asked Google if I was dumb, and Google came about um, articles, quotes, poems on. Um, dumb, stupid Dumbness, stuff like that, yes. dumbness, and all of those things, um, spoken words and stuff. But I came across this um, collection Word. of articles yes, yes. by um, an educator 
who was discussing reasons why students might think they may, they may be dumb. And she spoke about things like ADD, that's attention yes, deficit yes, disorder, yes, yes. or ADHD, yes. attention yes. deficit hyperactivity yes. disorder. She spoke about autism, she talk about, spoke about dyslexia. And I read about dyslexia and it felt like I spoke, I spoke to the person that was like... Right, yeah, talking like about me, like yeah. The article, and that was like the like first moment of clarity for me throughout my life, like my entire life. That was the first time I understood all that I, that has the, been the struggles. Yeah, all of the struggles that I've had in classes, everything. And um, immediately I came, I came across that I was hungry for more information. So um, I don't like to read text. So I downloaded audio, audio notes, infographics, YouTube, YouTube's whatever it was that I could lay my hands on that had dyslexia attached to it. Then um, it was clear that I could share these characteristics. Then I wanted to know if I was. What I had immediately was um, this online software for me to like... Sell. Wait a minute, don't let's slip because I'm sure many will probably be lost now. <laughs> Everything she's doing so far is online. She's Googled it. She's found out. She's trying to, you know, attend to it. Now, you say to me, on ground, that is two feet on the ground, on the street here in Nigeria, you don't have anything contemporary that you can, like, interact with and ask if this is what is happening to me? No, we do. At the time when I found that, that was in 2015, there was nothing. And Excuse that was me? Yes. There was, there doing, was, are you saying it was blank? It was blank. I, I, I researched. We had we had some educators that would that wrote some articles here in Nigeria, but nothing comprehensive. They would write articles on p issues with their student in classes, but no direction of where to go. And um, that was what prompted me to do something about dyslexia because I I dropped out of school and I didn't want any other student to like to go, to to go through exactly. Okay, now let's come back to going online now to uh, as it were interrogate and see if you can find an answer. So what did you do? Okay, so um, I went online and um, I did those, those different softwares on testing on dyslexia. I, I, took, I took the test and he said I was um, severely dyslexic, also because I was left-handed, so I was right brain dominant and the likes, the likes. But um, being paranoid and being a perfectionist, I wanted More. something very accurate because I was like, you know, online is usually not, like, not always accurate and all of that. So I started to search. And um, I found organizations outside of the country. I was looking for organizations in Nigeria. Um, I found nothing. Uh, so I, I contacted my my aunt who works for an NGO as, at the time. She's a medical doctor, Mrs. Tomo. And she told me she was going to help me find someone, someone around. Eventually, I did a cognitive analysis testing yes. and that was how I was able to tell what brain like my level of brain dominance yes that was what I settled for as a dyslexia test at the time okay now so cognitive test now if you go to explain that to and uh, don't let me say your pair if you go to explain that to a parent for instance who now watching this and wondering is that boy also like my doing that I'm watching now, or is that my daughter also going through this? How do I so cognitive test? What would that do for you? Okay, so um, you know we have our brains, and um, our brains are wired like they basically control everything that we do. We have the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. Yes. In a way, you can tell dyslexia depending on the part of the brain that is more dominant. We use both sides of our brain the same way we use both uh, both of our hands, but you know we use one hand more, more, often. more than the yes, other one. Yes. So it's not like you can't use the other part of the hand. It's just that one is like more, more dominant, dominant for you. Yes. So that's the same thing that happens in the brain. So some people are right brain dominant, some people are left brain dominant. If you're right brain dominant, you would that's. That's when it controls them, creativity, 3D imagination, spatial reasoning. If you're left brain dominant, that controls mathemat mathematics, um, verbal processing, or auditory re reasoning, and all of those things like that. So most dyslexics are right but brain I, dominant. I so that's why they struggle in classes or activities that are required for them to use their left brain. So cognitive analysis will tell you Obvious. what part of the brain is more dominant. That Then you can tell, okay, this is my strength, this is my weaknesses, that can also... Okay, be. now, is that why some people categorize dyslexia as a gift? Is that why they think it's a gift? Yes, that is why people think dyslexia is a gift. It's not like most dyslexics or cases that I have, I have come across personally, cases that I have read about, dyslexics, in, if, if they have, may, may probably 
if they have impairments, maybe in the in reading, the writing, they usually are gifted in, in other music. Yes. yes. So it's, it's, it's just that they have this. So even with the reading and writing, they can learn it creatively. Like, creatively, creatively, yes. Yes, yeah, exactly, creatively. So those areas where they lack, they have ways where they can complement them. So that's why I don't even like to call dyslexia a disability. But, yes, yes, okay. Okay, all right, now, let, let, let's, let's move on because there's something that is frightening here. Now, so in our educational system, or educational systems, don't let me just even say because now we're looking from uh, infancy up to university level. How, how alarming are the gaps? How disturbing do you think the gaps are on what we know about dyslexia, what we can do with dyslexics? How do we help them to go to school, get proper education without feeling um, like a dropout? Okay, well, I would say that um, there's been progress made so far, but not enough. I would say like progress we've made between 2015 till now, the level of awareness, I will call it maybe um, 8%. 8? Yes. Because we have, we have, Lagos, for instance, yes, 8%. We have, we have um, 36 That's states. That's like a drop in the ocean. Yes. We have like 36 states in, in um, Nigeria. In Nigeria, yes. And um, in Lagos, we've not even covered the major areas of Lagos on awareness. Maybe maybe the Kedja are well aware, people on the island well aware, but we have um, the Paja, the Drew, all yeah, of those Jekunle, areas, the Jekunles, the, Jekunle. yeah, so, the Badagri, and the Kurudu. Not to talk of outside of Lagos. Do you understand? So I will call it 8 to 100. Like, we're in the 8% yeah, and yeah, there's like level. more to fill up. Now, something else again that um, is a little bit uh, frightening in our environment is a question of data management. Number one, to even gather the data, we don't have the capacity for that. Then to analyze or interrogate the data, we also don't seem to have the capacity for that. So how many, well, we say the, the, the United Nations says we have over 5 million children, you know. So how do we deal with that kind of figure? Um, for, it is very, we have psychologists. And in Nigeria, we do not even employ psychologists. We have people who go to school for majority of these courses that they can use to help people with dyslexia or other learning difficulties. But people who graduate from psychology and end up going to work in a bank. So that's like that's the reality of things. So we have we have professionals that can do this thing. But if we have the right government bodies that like prompt these actions, like train psychologists, make me ensure that they can be employed, things like that, I'm sure that this can be solved. Okay, let's come back to the basics. Let's start from the word go. So, how do you begin to know that you might have dyslexia? What are the things that you'll probably be going through that would be like the struggles that you had? What are some of those things? Okay, so um, dyslexia signs differ um, according to the age group. But one thing that is usually very common amongst all is like the delayed, um, delayed um, learning to read. When you when you're having delay in learning to read, when as an adult you're reading but you're not compre comprehending, there's delayed memorizing, um, the issue with um, inverting your um, letters or your numbers, um, issues with learning to spell, um, even writing. Yeah. Most most people most people who are dyslexic think in pictures. So um, they they think in pictures. So that. if if you're reading, let, let's come practical. Let's come practical. If you're reading something that you can easily relate to, maybe um, let's say the psychology now, and um, psychology in a way it relates to like things you see every time. But science is like the pure sciences. There's no how you're going to read your chemistry and you'll be able to form a mental picture of it. So that's that's the that's the thing. So. The classic thing in pictures, the classic, um, the, the, they can't tell their re um, left hand from their Red right hand, yes. usually difficulties with telling the time from the clock. There's so many varies according to age and the level of um, severity. Now, I, I like that. Uh, according to age. So, actually, adults too can be dyslexic. Yes. That's what you're saying. Yeah, we have dyslexics in the workplace. That, 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 that person. Excuse me. You mean. Like we have in the studio here, you have dyslexics, they, they, they can actually be with you without you knowing. Yes, we have dyslexics even in the workplace. We have dyslexics everywhere. The, the number is like very high. We have one in five people living with dyslexia. So it's just that it is undiagnosed. We have dyslexics in the workplace. We have dyslexics in your home. 
that's, yeah. that's, that's how yeah. that's how how um common it is. It is. So um in the workplace how you can identify dyslexic um dyslexia is uh, maybe that um worker that would run away from anything written or writing, but that person probably fluent in like vocals, um, in creativity, yeah. and things like yeah. that. But the person just will excel in all those to, areas. But when it comes to now let's Yeah, let's write a document, let's send an email. You see that this person might be efficient, but when it comes to this email part of it, the person is like lagging behind and stuff like that. So we have all of those. Yeah, we have that. Now Okay, we have looked at the educational sector. So if we now come to the work environment, do we have the right disposition, therefore, in dealing with this in the work environment? Do you think we have that in terms of our, well, managerial disposition in dealing with, you know, staffers who seem to be exhibiting this? Yes. Um, basically, those workers who have dyslexia, they're not, like, useless. They have areas of strength that they're good at. And it's at, it's at your loss if you're if you using yes. a, a, a staff in an area that they're not good at rather than focusing on making sure that they're using them in the areas where they're great. So that's it. That's, it's, it's, that's it's simple logic. That, yes. really. You you know their areas of strength. Use, use them for that. The areas where they lack behind, use someone that can do it. It's not that complicated, but but oh, but again, it's not that complicated. But, but again, <laughs> again, being in Nigeria, I tell I tell every just every every dyslexic this this thing as well. Um, also for myself, I won't I won't say that because um I have difficulties reading. I would not read. I'm back in school now, studying psychology, and it is required of me to read to write exams. So I have found ways that I can that, that can help me learn, that can help me read. So it is required that everybody like you level the playground i tell every dyslexic that level the playground do not let them so you got to up your game you yes. can't keep saying because i lack this mm -hmm. then i'm going to remain here that's exactly. what you're trying to say yes okay now but let's let, let's move it a little bit now so you have said something about the fact that uh, we are going about eight percent eight percent out of 100 is not it's is, nothing it's not comfortable yes now so what would africa what, what, what do you think you can do with that? What what are you doing right now? What have you done so far? What has been the response like? What so what are you getting? Are you are you discouraged? Well, um, <clears throat> discouraged sometimes, but I won't stop. That's it. No matter how discouraged I get, I won't stop. We we started in um, twenty sixteen. That was when when West Africa was founded. We raised awareness. It is very difficult to get support. So far, One World Africa has been sustained basically by myself, some friends, and majorly my father. So it is very difficult because we have that like large, large figure, and there is nothing, no funds, no resources to help these people. We have people on the wait list currently in One World Africa, and we're still trying to see how we can help them. So that's it. If we have, so you don't have uh, 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 I'll, I'll just want to. Let's clarify this because okay. we have corporate Nigeria also watching this kind of yes. show and getting the kind of information you're passing out. Yes. When we say we don't, we lack support. So you've approached some uh, members of the corporate Nigeria and they're like, what's that? Yes, we, we've approached them. But um, again, I don't, I don't like to sound entitled. I understand the fact that dyslexia is like very strange. They also understand the whole misconception in the ni in Nigeria. Everybody starting NGOs. Everybody is like, you know, you're stepping back. You don't, you don't want but to be to yeah. exactly. But um, yes, we we have approached. We um, yeah, we've done, we've done, we've done a lot of, we've done a lot of things. Due diligence. Yes, but basically, what we do now as one with Africa is we do what our hands can handle. Now, so uh, in pushing this to the streets, where did we start from? Did you? Get we went to schools, so or we went to markets, so or we went to parks. Or yes, to um, I started. I launched One World Africa with an awareness and Lake Ikoi Link Bridge in October 2016. On the bridge. Yes, Lake Ikoi Link Bridge. I had some friends. We wore the vest. We shared um, pamphlets, and we spoke to people around the area. Um, that's that was how we started. We also um, did uh, a web. Yes. On the bridge. Yes, Lake Ikoi Link Bridge, and it's Saturday morning. You know that's. And they didn't think you guys or you, you guys are weird or something. No, I, 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 it was, it was, well, that, that was also to our advantage here. Yeah? They were curious to know what we were doing there and we were happy to let them know what we were doing there. So that was it. So we were able to carry out um, advocacy around the area. We got, we got right Some responses. responses yes, yes, we got people calling us back afterwards. And as well, we also went to schools to screen um, some dyslexia movies to help, um, do awareness in um, public schools. We touched them um, Ibadan, 
that's Oyo State and some places in Lagos at the time when we first started. And we've, been, we've, not, we've not stopped. We've um, done um, teacher training workshops and oh, likes. I like that. Teacher training. Yes. To create awareness amongst teachers about what dyslexia is. Yes, and how to help their students. And how did that go? How did that, did that go down well with the teachers? Yes, it's beautiful actually. But major, majorly, the challenges teachers usually would have is, fine, we provide them details on how to help their students who have dyslexia. Yes, but majorly they tell you that, okay, fine, it's not as if they don't want to help their students or they don't want to teach them or anything like that. Or, but they want to be able to teach children that can write external examinations. So if if you teach them the way they can learn as the classics, you test them the way they can excel as the classics. What then happens when it's time to write external, hmm. external examination? When is the way it is? So no matter how much we try from the from the grassroots level, it still goes down to curriculum and policy. And that is where we that are going to have is, an issue right now. That, that is where the issue is. Now, so for you, uh, you're quite young. So I mean, the future is still very bright. Now, for you, you, you can redefine you know, the, the space, as it were, and how you fit into it. But for the adults who are caught in this, wh how do you, how do you, what, what okay. way do you see? Uh, yes, what, what way forward do you see for them? Okay, so for the adult, even for youth like myself, majorly, um, what we try to do is take care of the mental health impact of dyslexia. Because so many of these people have lived with this thing. They, have, they don't know what it no, is. I need that to clarify further. Mental health aspects yes, yes there are some negatives there. yes it affects the self-esteem it leads to depression you possibly um drop out of school or you're you're finding it difficult to do things that your parents will normally do your teacher has probably called you stupid your parent has probably called you lazy all of those things and you grow up without knowing with why. those impressions you know yeah, and you don't even know why, why? I, I think it's for me if someone calls me lazy now I actually understand no, what why you called lazy before oh why not I have been flogged um, I, there's just so much that has happened and that's that's why we were trying to advocate in schools for teachers or parents to stop flogging that student because they are failing I, I, I believe that um, I don't I don't think any any student is done no uh, uh, we have to be very careful here. You know the way African settings are. You know, especially in the villages. You know, they think a child is just being stubborn, not wanting to go to school, and therefore you need to, as it were, beat the devil out of him or something. You know, I mean, that's the impression. So you're saying that, that that may not be the case. That may not be the case. We have, um, you know, students students are struggling in school. Yes, this this is an analogy I also like to give. I, there's a young boy, he's finding it very difficult to read. And if he doesn't read well, you're still going to insult him or flog him. So probably just act out so that to even just not even read at all. What's the point of reading something you want to start with the point of reading wasting your time on something you won't grab? Do you understand? Yes. So that's what I feel is wrong with the this, system. Yes, that's what I feel is wrong with the system. So if teachers can embrace this um, it's not complicated. We I know that the, the limitations or challenges we might be concerned about is that maybe it will be very expensive to because you have to add additional facilities yes for, for but it is it is actually not complicated if if we have um, people who are in the um, colleges of education already teaching learning this, this yes um, teachers before they are even um, they come out to like become teachers we have people going to schools head of um, schools and um, ministry of education it is not complicated. Applying dyslexia or teaching students with dyslexia is not complicated. And if you even apply um, that training in your classroom, it's a win-win for every student, actually. Yeah, because some of the, as it were, the normal, we also be able to yeah, use the same yes, method. Okay. Exactly. So it's, it's not like at a loss. You don't need to take, dyslexia is, we have some severe cases of dyslexia. Though. Chronic. Yes, very chronic, quite maybe really slow. They want they had to learn at different pace with their mates and all of that. I can understand maybe sometimes where you need to like take them away for like some special training or anything like that. But in mainstream classrooms, you can still try teaching a dyslexic person and teaching other students without having you just have to expand your lesson note and maybe you should just be willing to do that for your students and uh, find new, new examples new that you can examples cite yes and in also class. new new um I, I i think that in nigeria we need to expand our knowledge of um testing standardized testing we need to like expand it to accommodate some other forms like the oral yes and the, okay like now now I, I like what you just said there now so if you now come back to what uh, the universities are doing so 
how much of the researchers at the university level are going to correct some of these lapses, these gaps that we have, you have just identified now? Do we have that happening here in this environment? If it is happening, I have not seen. Um, I would, however, acknowledge the fact that I've, I know some people that have been working tirelessly. I've met people along this journey that are uh, also trying to fight what I'm trying. Going, to, yes. yes, what I'm trying to fight, and um, so. It is progress is being made, but it's still is still always challenged by the fact that the right authorities are not like there's no access to the right authorities or the right resources and the like. So that's that's it. Okay, now let's find a way to get to the right resources. So, uh, one world Africa. So where are you pushing the envelopes to? We, we are, have we gotten any government attention? Have we been able to um, push the advocacy to the point where we can begin to lobby? Majority, majority majority of um I know some educators that um I've been trying to work with and um they've been trying to also push as much as they can. But it, it still just gets stuck at the level of government where we have to do policy or do something. The bureaucracy is very complicated actually and um it's slow. And we have people that need this thing and they need it now. And you are saying wait for wait, approval. Let's wait, let's do this and all of that. It's, it's not helping matters at all. So that part, it gets frustrating. You just want to give up. But we're still pushing. We're still pushing and we're still hoping for the best. We also have um, international support. That's actually majority. That's majorly what has been the backbone for dyslexia advocacy. Wow. At, at least for One World Africa. International. Yes, we've, we've had um, international um, support. We, we're partners with Noticeability in the U.S., we have Billy's, Billy's Quest and also we have um, the International Dyslexia um, Foundation. Yes. They have been, uh, they have been like Supporting. forthcoming with resources because we don't have resources in Nigeria on to deal with this. To deal with this thing. So they've been forthcoming with resources that could be used. Now, uh, we'll talk about resources, but let me just, just a, a, a flip, a flip of the coin. So, dietary, you can't correct this with, di with diets? You can't you can't eat it proper not, food to help your brain to begin to you know get accustomed to the way you should. Dyslexia is not a medical condition, and we should stop seeing it like that. I like that. We we a doctor cannot even diagnose dyslexia. I remember when I was much younger, yes. and I was also trying to wonder what what exactly was wrong with me, and I would go to for a doctor's appointment maybe because I have malaria, and I pro and then I add to my symptoms of what I'm experiencing that I can't tell the time from the clock and the man is not interested in that aspect of things because he doesn't No, I want you to say it. that again please do it because some uh, moms don't understand this. The child is looking at the clock, the face of the clock and the child cannot tell the time so till, till now I can't tell the time from an analog wristwatch so I excuse me, so if I have a wristwatch here now if I ask you do you please what the time is it won't be accurate. <laughs> and I will take my time counting the One, 5, two. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and the rest. So I just would avoid it altogether. So, yes, it happens. Then also automatically telling my left hand from my right hand. Yeah. Well. I cannot do that to date. I'm left-handed, so I probably hold a pen and try to see what hand I can write with. Okay, now let me come back to that. We'll come to resources before we, uh, before we go for the... Uh, Somebody saying uh, they should take some water. But before we go for the water, you know, left-handed, right-handed, you know, when we were growing up as children, our parents actually will correct you. If you're left-handed, they will smack you that you should try and use your right hand. Do you think that is good for the children? I, I don't, I don't, I do not agree to correcting the hand because um, I've, I've learned that the hand is also connected to the way our brains are wired. So... So if the child is naturally left-handed, let then just the leave that child. Be. If the child is right handed, then Le yes, exactly. Okay, so if parents have been following us, of course, when we allow Dane to take a, a sip of the water, we don't have champagne here, you know, so we'll take some water and then we'll come back. We we'll want to deal with your questions and your comments, and of course, uh, yeah, whatever queries you like to know through at uh, Dane. Stay with us. We must dilate the eyes, we look for the
for it. They have cataracts to look at the back of their eyes. They have glaucoma. You know, to do a full workup for them. You will remember the insurance check. They will be You will remember the prostate. When we look in deeper than we ever looked in before to ensure that um, we, we close all the loopholes. Every edition is an arresting conversation with distinguished Nigerians from various strata of the society bearing their minds on how we can realize the Nigeria of our dreams. Join us live on Close Flow Monday every week here on NT2 Lagos Network Center. Close Flow. The conversation is about you. Thank you very much. First thing with us, I'm sure uh, many of us, we are gripped to the very edge of our seats trying to uh, process what uh, Doni has been saying because I can see eyes in that living room and in that office going right, left and center. Could that be me? Is that my child? Is that my sister? Is that You know, these questions are now... Now, is this uh, is, is dyslexia? Is it uh, hereditary? Is it yes. is, is this genetical? Yeah, we have, we have um, evidences that links it to genetics that um, you could put dyslexic and you can give it to someone who's dyslexic. Or you have to say this clearly. Uh, uh, I'm not say so that my guess, so it, it, it's, it, it can be... It yeah, we have links. We have, we have dyslexia that's been li linked to genetics. So it could be your grandparent and yeah. you could have it in your child. It could, yeah, there's, it's sinister call. Well, quickly, let me say a big thank you to all our viewers who have sent in questions and comments and uh, who are trying to see how doing can help with their own situations. We are still expecting more comments and questions so that we can deal with this. Yeah, but uh, before I read the first question, um, for you now, so depressions don't come anymore? Um, the depressions... Okay, I won't call it depression. It's just momentary sadness, you know. When it happens to every every human being, when you you want Do something, something and, and you're not, you're not getting, getting it, it exactly yeah. What, yeah, that's basically that's it. But depression, not anymore. I've come to understand why I struggle, what I struggle with, and I've also come to learn how to even like deal with it deal and with overcome it. Yes. yes, so that's it. Okay, but is there anything about the threshold? Is, is there? Do you think people need to increase the threshold on how to deal with things like this? That uh, they, just like you've done, so it, it doesn't it doesn't overwhelm you. Yeah, it is very it is very important to deal with this because it happens is every even with even when it's not even a case of dyslexia. When you don't when you're going through stuff, when it's challenging everything you stand for as a human then when it is like making you lose the things that you want the most, it makes you wonder why you're frustrated. It's it's just that that's it. So do not let dyslexia be the reason why yeah, you Yeah, an excuse. Yeah, do not. Just find a way. I know I know that it is difficult. I know that um there's not there's not so much um resource for resource you to fall back and all on, of yes. that. But um you can you can you can self teach. Hmm. In in the absence of all of this, still we can reach you. You can self teach. Okay, so one word Africa can reach out to you. So just in case you are having challenges, try to uh, discover where you are and what to do. This is uh, Tosin from Oshuri. Tosin from Oshuri says, uh, "Hello, uh, my brother is left-handed, but my parents forced him to be right-handed." Throughout his primary school, it was a lot of struggle. Okay, when um, when I got into when I got to secondary school, it was more. He had to be pulled out of a normal secondary school to a technical secondary school. He's good with practical things. Does that mean he's dyslexic? I don't like to diagnose dyslexia until On the, there's so yes. many other, you've seen the other signs. So that is one of the signs, but there's more. So you have to, for your brother, you have to, um, you can check our website, www.onewardafrica.org. No, no, check, no, no. Um, Doreen, please, not everybody will have to grab as quickly as you are. So okay. take it easy. All right. Yes. All right. Yes. So talk to Doreen now. So where will she go? 
Okay, so um, for now, really, online resource. Okay, so we are ch the site you should go to. www.onewordafrica.org or just type dyslexia in Google. In, in Google, Google, something yes. will come up. Something so, come Dustin, up. did you hear that? One word, onewordafrica.org, that is our own organization, or just put dyslexia on Google, you'll get some kind of response, and that may link you, it will backlink you to, you know, our own site and see how she can help out. Because she has said to you, she cannot, not on this uh, 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 platform, actually diagnose. She might need to ask a lot more questions and probably see her brother. Okay? Uh, thank you, Tosin, for sending that, uh, sending that in. We have a Day from Sulere. This is another long one. My friend dropped out of university because he said he couldn't cope. Yet, he was one of the, wow, most creative guys in the department. Now he's designing luxury cars while waiting to secure admission abroad. This is Shion from Malaysia. Shion, you want to talk to him? So, what kind of state is that? Do you think you, you, we don't want to diagnose that either too? Um, well, I do not, I cannot diagnose that again. But another thing, that's, that's, that's like even giving us a pointer and something we can for, um, throw back to the government. We are wasting the resources that we have in this country. We have smart students, we have creative students that the educational system have pulled out. Pulled out, literally, yes. yes. They've been written off the system, but they, they have this gift. <laughs> I, I know a particular case. I know someone um, personally, his name is Sharif. Sharif is, Sharif is very good with mathematics. Sharif is a very brilliant person. He, but now he's but he can't speak English. Is, and he can't read properly. Now he's dropped out. Is his parents have disowned his own Because he is, is like the first of his family and um, oh, like all pathetic. of those. And, and now he's trying to struggle with um, logistics business. So imagine a mathematician. Yes. Yeah, so imagine all of those gifts wasted riding Okada trying to deliver goods. It shouldn't. It shouldn't come to that. We 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 don't have we don't have the um what's the, the luxury to throw out the gifts that we have as Nigeria. We, Nigeria is not where it's supposed to be here. So why why are we throwing out the things that can also be a part of making us what we're supposed to be? Now, I, that, that goes straight to the policymakers uh, that uh, we should also look deeply at these issues. This is uh, a 20-year-old girl trying to fill a gap that uh, many of our experts that should be looking at. That's what she's saying here. This is Shimu from Malaysia. Thank you, Shimu, for letting us know what is going on with your friend. Well, let me hear from Suleye says, have you tried to take the awareness to the public? I, I, I like Oshodi, Yaba, Surulere, because the best, uh, the less educated people might just take a dyslexic, a dyslexic child for an Olodo. We are trying yes. to get it out yes. there. We're still trying our best to expand our reach across Lagos, even outside of Lagos. We're trying our possible best, even across Africa, largely. Because that's we why you coined the name One World Africa yes, because you don't want to limit, yeah, don't want yes, to limit um, Nigeria. We have, we have internationally the, the statistics, their um, awareness, their resources, but in Africa, very, very limited. So we're trying as much as we can to get to Surulere, to get to Kuru, yeah, to get yeah, to yeah, to wherever. It is in our utmost desire to get to you. Okay, so um, the, the, how about volunteers? Do you ask volunteers to join you in some of these campaigns? Because Alameda is in Suleri, so probably Alameda can help. Is that, is that what yes, you, is yes, that? We, 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 we accept volunteers. We, we would love to have um, efficient hands assisting us to work so please reach you don't out want diversionary hands you want efficient efficient hands. hands we don't want people that would not um meet deadlines or deliver on um things that have been delegated to them efficient hands we, we can't afford to pamper anyone right now <laughs> so let me if you are if you are if you want to do something about this she's saying that this is not a playground okay it's uh let's work work and work and work okay we have uh, Kachi, Kachi from Yaba says, how do you cope as a student? Does your education cost more or require more money? How can parents balance two types of children when you have this kind of situation? So how can a parent, maybe Kachi as a, as a, as okay, as a parent? Okay, um, so far, I've been able to find inexpensive 
ways of learning. I've been able to um, come up with things that you can see easily around you. Personally, for me, learning as a student, I, I make use of um, YouTube videos, I convert my notes to infographics or audios and the many likes. You convert your notes into infographics? Yes. Online? Even with cardboards and um, markers and um, colored pencils and sticky notes, I do all of that. Um, it, it takes a lot of data, however, um, you know, getting resources that are different from what was provided to you in the classroom. Yeah. But that's the extra um, mile. That's the extra mile you, you have, have to, to take. Yes. Exactly. It's, I tell the like the classics, it's not a lazy badge. It's not a badge of excuse. If you want a claim, because people also come with oh, that what if someone is lazy and person is just claiming dyslexia. So I tell the classics, it's not a lazy excuse. It's not a lazy badge. If you want to claim that you're dyslexic, you have to go like you know when where every other person is taking one step. Be ready to take one to three four five step to be like to level the playground so that's it so um you can the, the resources internationally even if we can find in Locally, Nigeria, yes. yes so you can you can make use of it thank, thank god for technology it's made it is is brought this is brought this to us so please take advantage of okay let, let, let me throw that back at you uh, the flip coin okay. again uh, so technology so why have you not seen genetically modified systems or mechanisms to correct this if it's gen gene related why are science not find a way to deal with this well um i don't want to go controversial about this personally i don't see why dyslexia should be corrected we've we've had um even internationally we've had um famous and um yes, and people yes. who have been dyslexic i do not see dyslexia as a problem really it's just an educational system that was designed that doesn't work for us. If the system can expand to accommodate, and accommodate yes. every student, from the word go, everybody will strive. Brilliant. That's a brilliant one she's just given us there. So don't start to modify it. Don't start to give us uh, genetically modified uh, organisms. Now, okay, um, this is, uh, I don't have this name correctly. It says, my name, Timilola Akiade from Lagos. I'm highly impressed, and I think I've learned a lot, a new, a lot of new things. But how can I, how can dyslexia be totally corrected in an adult? Thanks. That's the um, You want to call that name? That's Temilola Akiade. Okay, um, Temilola Akiade. Um, corrected again. I don't know why you want to correct it. Learn to work with dyslexia. <laughs> if 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 you if you have difficulties um, learning sound, learning words find ways or reach out and we can see how we can help you just learn to work with any in any area in any area where you actually have challenges learn to work with it learn find ways to complement it if you lack writing if you lack in writing make yes. a point in oral if you lack something there's something to do it's it's, it's not it's not really that complicated well it's okay complicated but <laughs> Tell me, Lana, if I may borrow uh, uh, her brain, what she's saying that don't close the doors on yourself, don't shut yourself in, and then you know you make the case worse. Okay, now we have uh, Oyekemi Idris. I would like to ask her what is really the motivation behind this for you, and also where do you see this organization going to in the coming years? Okay, um, the motivation for me is I do not want to have another student go out of the system like I already wanted to. If, if not for the kind of um, family I was born into, You're probably it would have now. been worse. Yes. So now let's think about it. What of those who are in my shoes and do not have the kind of family, family that I, I have? What is happening What is happening to them? So I'm, I'm trying to ensure that we, we don't have dyslexics roaming the street. We don't have this less written off from the society. We deserve a place in this world as well. Okay, um, one more question here uh, before we yeah, we'll let Doi go away from me. It says, um, I, want to, I wanted to ask, in a situation where by a child, a dyslexic, a dyslex what's this? How can the university or institution deal with that? Is that what it's trying to say? Help in admission process of such a student Think this is Banji, so okay. a dyslexic. So how, how would the university help admission process? Okay, um, for admission process again, it still comes down to them expanding um, testing, um, standardized testing, Which expanding, yeah, expanding yes. the route for standardized testing, and also um, changing the policy 
um, to make it up all more inclusive. Yes, yes, make it more inclusive. Let there be more ways to test students. So even beyond them getting admission, when they are also in, in the school, school how would they let learn? them be able, like, teach them in the ways that they can learn. I tell everybody who is fighting for the right of education, great that you're fighting for fighting for access of children to gain access to education. But let's let's also take a sit back. Let's also fight for the quality of education that these students are getting. Get yes. So that's what we hope to do with One World Africa to expand our reach and um, ensure that um, there are more opportunities for dyslexics in Nigeria and outside of the country. Okay, so the way forward, the way forward, the coming years, are you sure you're not going to get tired of this? Are you sure you're not going to be sapped you well, know, by the overwhelming body? Number one, because the policy support that should have been there in the first place is not there. Internationally, yes, you're getting because our environment recognizes what you're dealing with and therefore they're making provisions. So how are you going to overcome all that? Well, I've, I've already put things to perspective. Before when I was, I had so much faith and I was daydreaming, I felt like um, this, in, can, this can this flip will, over. Blah, 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 blah. I, I, so as not to get frustrated, so as not to be desperate, we would continue to do that which we can handle in our capacity. But I am not going to give up on dyslexia. I, dyslexia I've, I've done, dyslexia has put me through, this journey has put me through worse, and I, I've still, I'm still here, and I will still be here. I would ensure it is, it is my dream and my ultimate desire to see dyslexics excel in high places in this country, and it would happen. Okay, why you say through your worst? So yeah, you cannot go further than this. It cannot be worse than this. It can be worse than this. So we are, we are, we are aiming for your best now. Yes. Now, if you're going to draw up uh, models, we might not get locally because our data are still very poor. But if you're going to draw models, like uh, role models, you know, uh, inspirations, you know, influencers, you know, creatives who have gone through this process, and they are now sitting on top of. So who would you cite, for instance, that you know? Well, um, we have in Nigeria, as a matter of fact. Um, well, they're not popular people, but I'm very proud of what they've achieved, despite their dyslexia. We know someone like your Sakyo Dua is um, a big, um, big brother host, and everybody is very conversant with IK. He has recounted the fact that he, he lives with dyslexia and all of that, and IK is doing well despite yeah. of it. We have Demilade Robert. He's a photographer. He also um, is, is, is known in the media space. So we have that. But if we're looking at large scale internationally, those who have done things, we have Richard Branson, we have Tom Cruise, we have Thomas Edison. Richard Branson? Yes, Richard Branson. Virgin? He is the Slessic. Yes, he is the Slessic. And we can recount that he, had, he struggled with school and all of yeah. that. Yes, so. So we have people, famous people. Dyslexia would not stop you. Dyslexia cannot stop you. It's not. It's not. It, it's not a deficiency that would ruin you from the system. Might make it worse. You know, yes, but or complicated. But we hope that it gets better. Now, okay. Now, I'm, I'm sure uh, the last question there, really, because he's saying that uh, that's from Banji. Uh, I'm sure Banji is a little bit uh, worried about uh, uh, going further. Now you are back to school. Yes. How did you manage to get into school then? How did you scale through? Um, okay. How did I get back into school? I I know how to I know how to cram to pass exams and that's really <laughs> what I do in school. <laughs> uh, but now, I, now, however, I have I, I go I go the extra mile to help me understand because I got frustrated in, in the school system before when all I did was cram to pass exams and yeah. I wrote through my old notes and I wonder what exactly, what exactly it was, was this there. About? Yeah. So now I'm I'm doing a course that I love. And um, I'm chasing like a career that I, I want. So what are you studying now? Psychology. Um, I'm a student of psychology, and and, um, and you you want to see how you can use that also to enhance the push in this because after all, this is basically about the mind. Yes, I that's that's the hope to be able to help the the slessics. I've been I've been helping from a place of um, personal experience. Yes. I want to also add expertise to it being certified because you know that's like a major thing in nigeria as well yeah because you don't have the certificate then we say we don't have that mm -hmm. so that's it okay now but how about uh, let's go back to parenting so when parents are confronted with issues like this signing from your own example now when they are confronted with issues like this what should they do um 
first and foremost, parents need to step back from, I understand why you want your children to um, excel. attain, like excel in academics and all of that. And I also know that it is expensive, education in Nigeria is expensive, you're paying to someone for school fees and your child will bring home one result. It can be very frustrating, I can relate to that, but I think that we should please step back. We should like what is let's let's even figure let's weigh what is more important to us is it the education or the, the well-being of, of your child, child yes. really like let's 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 look at these things in perspective you can also be you can also help your child you know as a parent as a parent you can you can work with your um, child's teacher you can advocate for your child in school if when the teacher is doing what the teacher shouldn't be doing you can sit with your child at home and also try to help them with these other coping mechanisms for dyslexia it's, everything is not um flogging or um everything really it won't it won't work that's the thing i won't tell every parent no no amount of time you flog your your child it's not going to help them learn the thing that they've not learned and, and if you even make them repeat yes. mm. that classroom, they're just repeating that same method that was given to them that they failed in the first place. It's, it's, the method is not new, so they will still struggle. Okay, so psychologically, um, everybody must come to that party. That's what you're saying. So yes. the parents must have their own uh, load to carry, and the child also must have. That's what you're saying. Yes, yeah? everybody okay. has to. It's 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 a it's a every it's a partnership. Everybody needs to work together. Teachers, um, parents, and um, children or people who have dyslexia, everybody needs to come together to work. We're hoping that the government will join as well. But everybody, it's a and in and thing for it to get better. And by extending that uh, framework, we are also looking at the workplace. I mean, some of the managers in the workplace must also recognize this and yes. begin to use the best of their personnel rather than... Rather, yeah, rather than uh, make them do the things that you're not good at. I used to... One time I was having a, d a d um, discussion with someone who was dyslexic, and um, he was saying that he was about to get a job, but he's scared that he might not be able to do stuff. And, and we were even... We went about... What about even saying that you're dyslexic in your CV? And you know, th you know what will happen? You won't get the job. <laughs> in the first fact. place, that is, if you write the CV, I say I'm dyslexic. They would also okay, oh God, thank you. They don't you know, to me. So, but um, I, I'm just trying to advocate for um, people, also the HRs and all of these people. It is at your best interest to have an employee in an area where they excel at than have them in an area where they struggle. It's faster, it is more productive, it saves time, it saves cost. It helps you. And it adds you. value. Honestly. Yeah, and it adds value. So that's it. That's, that's, that's what I, that's, that's my take, that's my gift to you today. Okay, all right, so let's wrap it up for everybody. So for the, uh, the classic, what would you say to them? Uh, if, they, if they have done self-diagnosis, like you did, you had the courage to do that. So what would you want to say to them? And for those who are hiding away in the cupboard, those who are still uh, like denying it that that's not what is it's not my portion well um, self-diagnosis is not enough um, we have you we have a um, new method of um, um, dyslexia diagnosis also currently in Nigeria we we are partner with um, a particular um, organization, organization as well for that so um, so I did not just do self diagnose as well I'm also been um, diagnosed because it's, it's, it's very important to also know the areas where you struggle. That's true. It's, 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 That's true. it's, it's beyond just knowing that there's dyslexia. Knowing the fact that you're dyslexic and not knowing the areas where you struggle will not even help you to know the areas where you need to improve at. So that's it. So, so you need to see a professional. You need to see a professional. Okay. But then I know the old um, gap as well um, of getting a professional. So in the, in the, um, in the process in the process of that you can do what i call the first aid that's the self-diagnosis where you also do a self-evaluation this is where i struggle at then you research on how you can improve or reach out to someone you can reach out to me there's there's there, that, that's it that's so, a load on you uh, you're already in school so by that we start reaching out to you how do you want to cope with all these things well Guys. well i have a team oh great and um it is. It is. It is. It is. It has always been a load, but a, a load that we're willing to carry. Um, so please reach out. 
we would Simple. as much as possible try to re reply you as like early but we would definitely get to you no, as long as you send a message to us we would definitely you get definitely get a response at most it would take a week but you will get, well, you a, get response. a response definitely. okay now before we wrap it i don't want to leave on a bad note but uh, globally nigeria is ranked to have uh, well to house the largest number of out of school children yes that that's like that's a sad reality of um, Nigeria. But um, let's also refrain that um, um, quote here. You know, most of the time when we when we're thinking out of school and the society is thinking out of school, we're, when we're trying to solve the problem, even the government, we're thinking um, about uh, maybe lack of funds. Funds is um, one. Is, is one of the causes. We have um, people who can afford school fees. I was I could uh, go, yes. go to any school but I wanted to go school. to, and I was out of school. So, so finances are not just the limitation, or they're not the only reasons why we have students out of school. So, I needed to have that. All right. Thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, for coming on the show, and um, it's been quite brilliant. Thank so, you. we we hope to have you again. Maybe we want to review uh, towards the end of the year what we have been able to achieve with One World Africa. I okay. Look forward to that. Yes. Thank you very much. And for our viewers, well, we we always say that um, without you, this show will not go on. So. And we expect you to join us with your comments and your uh, questions because that's actually what this is all about. It's about you and about our guests. So thank you for watching and bye for now.